there is a place that has been doing moonshots for quite a while. I think that the lore about uh, Bell Labs and Xerox Park is well known, and I think it's a little unfair that the place that has, in a way, been running the longest, uh, and certainly over the last 30 years, done some of the most exciting stuff, is not as well known. This is Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin. Uh, but they are on a mission to take real moonshots to do radical things on a regular basis. And so I'm excited not only to hear about what Charles is going to tell us, I think this particular moonshot is extremely exciting, but I also think it's great to see that there is a place in the world that is doing this on a regular, uh, systemized basis. Uh, welcome to Sulfur X, Charles. Can't wait for your talk. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, at the, um, the Skunk Works, we very seldom get to talk about what we do behind closed doors. So, you know, I'm just I'm really excited to be able to share with you a, um, a project that we've been working that might be able to bring energy for everyone. But there's really one approach that has come to dominate the fusion community, and that's what's called a tokamak. And uh, there's been more than 200 tokamaks built uh, across the world to date. Uh, they've come closer to being able to generate more energy out than energy in than any other approach. But the physics of a tokamak uh, lead to a really enormous size. So that scale naturally leads to extremely high costs, high complexity, and really long time frames. The first power plant based on ITER is not projected to be ready until the mid-2040s at best. So, you know, what if there was another way of doing this? If you weren't hampered by the physics of a tokamak and you were able to generate fusion in a compact form factor, something that would generate 100 megawatts of power, enough power for a small city of 50 to 100,000 people, and something that would fit on the back of a truck. And so if you think of the complexity of something like this, it's closer to that of a jet engine. So it's something that you would be able to build on a production line versus being a major infrastructure project. You know, we really think at Lockheed uh, that we can make this a reality. And so uh, what we've done is we've built upon the past 50 years of fusion research and created a brand new way of generating fusion that's very suitable for a very compact form factor. And in my mind, this is a perfect example of the adjacent possible, where you take different parts of things that already exist to come up with something new. And so we've had a, uh, you know, I really can't say enough about the brilliant, fantastic, dedicated team we've had working on this. Some of them are pictured here in our lab, um, including the inventor on the very right is uh, Tom McGuire. He's the guy who's come up with our brand new concept. The small is the reason we can do this quickly. If something's small, you can build up momentum, you can develop it fast. It doesn't take five years to design it, it takes three months. We can design it, build it, test it in under a year. We can do several of these cycles, and we think we can get to a prototype in five years. And as a defense company, our increasing mission is to enhance global security, and this is how we do that in the energy realm. The world already does 40 gigawatts of gas turbines a year. The gas line going into that gas turbine, we're going to replace that with a heat exchanger coming off our fusion reactor. We basically use the gas turbine infrastructure completely. We partner with one of those companies and we ship fusion powered turbine plants around the world. 10 years, we have great military vehicles. 20 years, we have clean power for the world. This isn't online by 2100. This is online by the time I can't even retire after we finish this.